Painting 2 and welcome to week 6. So we're going to be, uh, this, this week's not that difficult, it's just the leg bones, but uh, you know a lot of these um, things I'm talking about and the photographs, the photocopies I sent you are interesting just before we begin uh, to look at that history. So I have two books and I have sent you photocopies of uh, the older one which is, uh, take this out, okay so this is, uh, well uh, this one is, uh, this one is the older one, this one dates from uh, 1543, these are by Vesalius, and these ones are from a couple hundred years later, 1747. And uh, these ones are by Albinus, and there's quite a difference uh, between the two of them. Um, of course, it was um, very difficult to draw from uh, bodies and to obtain skeletons. Uh, people were uh, more superstitious than they are now, and they didn't want their bodies being interfered with at all after death. And uh, they also didn't want uh, to end up displayed in such ways, so a lot of the people that ended up uh, being used in these uh, dissections were prisoners, murderers. Actually, in those days you could be executed for lots of trivial things, so who knows what they'd done, but this is Vesalius who was one of the first to do it, the drawings, so it was pretty revolutionary, you know, this, this sort of stuff would be causing quite a reaction. And you can see his rib cages and things. I like his style, it's very um, chunky and straightforward and uh, the skeletons are all doing things. The, uh, I mean, it's incredible work for the time. His body's stand in the countryside. And this guy is going to slowly, you can see different bits, he's standing there with bits of his skin off. And there's recognizable buildings from the 1540s in the background. Slowly there's, there's, there's hanging from some gibbet there and showing the internal organs. So it's quite... When I was at art school, I, uh, I one of the schools I went to, I went to about three or four different art schools and I found one of them to be uh, really not doing very much teaching at all. I mean, you didn't see much of the teachers. So you were left to your own devices. So I organised um, a group of students and myself to go out and draw from uh, a mortuary, you know, bodies that were lying there. So we um, did that. I, but, you know, it wasn't a real dissection. It was the straightforward thing that they do, which is um, checking the internal organs, you know, the heart and the lungs and liver and uh, kidneys and such, and uh, then the brain, so they weren't going into the muscles or anything, but it was still quite a, a thing to see. Albinus is here, now he was much more refined than Vesalius, and that's the photocopies that I sent you, I, I really love his stuff. He had a very much finer line, and you can see that 200 years um, had certainly caused a big evolution in drawing style from the uh, earlier ones. And uh, these are the muscles, There's, this is, they're quite beautiful and the background's very, very fine line, very delicate. Um, this is the skeleton, yeah, there's the back of the skeleton that I sent you. And that's the one I, I photocopied and sent all of you. Hopefully you've all managed to get that. I know there was one poor student, I had to send it to him uh, 
five times before it actually arrived at the house. So, <laughs> I hope I don't have to do that too often. Anyway, that's um, Albinus. And these men were the true revolutionaries of their time because, you know, some of them had, uh, some of the anatomists, I mean, they resorted to grave robbing to get bodies to draw. And it was highly illegal. So here we have now obtainable <laughs> a few clicks on Amazon, the perfect skeletons to look at. Small skeletons but still not too bad. So this bone here is the biggest single bone in the body. It's called the femur and uh, it's going to join in to what you were doing last week which was the pelvis. So that's really today's exercise, how the pelvis joins into the femur. Now this fellow's kind of coming apart a bit, let me see. So once again, uh, if you have a pencil, if you haven't, uh, I know some of you prefer using the mechanical pencils, but if you have a pencil, I like the soft ones and uh, you can work from one of those. Let's see if we can get bits posed up here. Yeah. Now you can just use the photocopy I sent you. Um, you know, try your best to get the shape. Really with the skeleton, you know, for some of you it's an exercise in getting things balanced, you know, so you want both sides of the rib cage balanced, you know, similar, not one giant and one small. Same with the legs, you don't want one out of proportion to the other. So, uh, you know, hopefully those of you who are not so accomplished at drawing by the end of these piece by piece exercises every week you will be able to do a more knowledgeable skeleton let's say it won't be perfect but a more knowledgeable and uh, articulate skeleton so um, you know and it's the shapes are interesting i mean i was talking to a student this week that nothing in nature is is straight this bone curves slightly, you know, there's no straightness in it. And there's a curve here. There's a curve very noticeable in the arm bones. And the reason for that is, you know, unlike something that's dead straight, it's easy to break that. But something that's got a slight curve in it, you know, it's going to be more strong because the surface area is increased and that increases the strength of it. So I don't know if that makes sense. You know, I'm sounding a bit scientific, but the spiraling shape and the current and the fact that nothing is straight makes it stronger. So I'm just going to do that femur bone. And that's all that this week is really easy. So, you know, you don't have to really stress yourself. Um, femur bone in like that. Now, if you want to do both of them, you're welcome. Uh, I think I sent you both of them in the photocopy, so you're welcome to try and do that. I'm just going to do this dead quick here for you. And it kind of stretches out a bit more as it comes down towards the knee. Yeah. I don't know if you can all see that quite clearly. And... Uh, might shrink it so it can fit into this, to this piece of paper. But try and do your accurate size, okay? Okay, so it's coming in like that. And it's got the hip joint here, the hip socket, which goes into what you did last week, which is the, uh, there's the socket for it there. Like with the eyes, and the eyeball goes into the eye socket, the hip joint goes into the pelvis bone socket. Look, watch out, Fritz, don't fall, stay up there. You have not got long to work. Okay. 
So there it is, there it is. Now, I'm just doing it real quick. You know, you can spend as long as you like. You've got the whole week. And this is just a very simple exercise this week. If you want to add it on to what you did last week with the pelvis, you're welcome. You know, you can do that. You know, if you're, I mean, if you're a more skilled artist and you've more time and you're not too harassed, you could, you're welcome to put more into it. You know, I, I'm just giving you the basics for each week, how much you want to um, push into it yourself is entirely up to you. I'll give you a quick example and then uh, if you want to take it much further, you can. You can always tell the difference between a real artist and somebody who's not really into it. A real artist can hardly help themselves doing more and more and more and more and working, 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 working. A person who's not really into it, it's like a chore, you know, it's like washing the dishes or cleaning clothes or something like that. It's something that has to be done and is done, but there's no love in it. And that's the difference between a somebody who's an artist and somebody who's not an artist. It's not that you're better at drawing, it's that you've got more love for the subject if you're into it. And uh, love is the most important thing in art. Okay, so it's going to go around there and like that. And I'm just. I use shading a lot. You know, some of you are more line artists, that's good. Me, personally, I'm more of a kind of shader because I think, you know, like I'm into drawing and I'm into painting. So if I was just into drawing, it would be just maybe lines. Something you can get if you want to, I sent somebody a uh, link to this available on uh, Amazon. These are Japanese, they're I think about seven or eight dollars. These are Japanese eraser pencil things, and it's got an eraser in there. You get you know you get different thicknesses. I got this one is uh, called Ultra Fine. Uh, it was two point three millimeters or something like that. Anyway, it. Um, with it, you can actually I'll take it. These guys gonna fall. So, um, say for instance, you know, say like I was doing something like that. I filled in a whole piece like that, and I wanted to bring something out that was light inside it. I could use this like a pencil. something in a shape. I don't know if this paper is that great for example but you know you can use it to direct very fine erasing bringing back the white of the paper and uh, making a lighter area in your drawing. Example. So I was taking an eye, just creating there. I think this is better for a smaller scale, this thing. I'm creating a kind of white bit in the eye. You could do it more circular. That's than with a normal eraser. You could make it more shaped, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Actually, this paper is not like this. cheap paper. Let me see if it's better with um, this is better quality paper. 
it's a proper pad. So if I do that, pencil, and I. Okay, you with me there? So if I want to take in things with this, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not that different, but anyway, with the pencil eraser thing, you can do more specific erasing and take things back. Ah, that's it, you have to press harder than I thought. to create a lighter area in the eye. I don't know if you can see that. So that was with that pencil eraser. So it's more directed than a normal eraser. You can do a real circle where the light is catching the eye. And it's not really a great example, but <laughs> I hope you get the impression of what I'm talking about. And uh, that's it. So that's another tool that you might be interested in getting if you're into pencil art. After we finish doing all the skeleton, you're going to do another drawing of the skeleton at the end, showing how much you've learned from all these bits and pieces that we've joined together. And then you'll be free to do your own work. Now that could be paintings like you did in painting one. Hopefully you still have equipment left or it could be more developed drawings like I've been talking about where you create something that's even more amazing with pencil and uh, it's fine with me whichever you know I mean as long as if you're going to do pencil drawings maybe more than one you know maybe one or two paintings you know we'll, we'll be more free after we finish the anatomy so this week it's just the femur bone, which is the biggest of the bones in the body, the leg bone. And uh, here's my quick drawing of it here. Down there, it's a little bit longer than that in reality. You know, I've kind of shrunk it to fit in the paper, but uh, it will be it's a little bit longer than that. I'll kind of go down to the bottom here. See, I always just go in loose, kind of shady, soft, soft pencil. Then I can use the darker bit to just shape in the lines. I want to get that bottom. I see Fritz is lying down there. So I want to get that bottom more shaped in like a bone. See, I, I mean, you're, you, everyone's different. I feel my way into a drawing and uh, like I'm getting comfortable with it. Some people go straight in like they're super comfortable. Me, it takes me a little bit of time to get comfortable. And then once I get into it, I'm into it. I let myself go. But uh, everyone is different, you know, and that's what I love about drawing and art. It's everyone's brain has got a different rhythm. Some people have very fast brains, nothing wrong with that. Some people have slower brains, nothing wrong with that, you know. We always think one is better than the other, it's not. You know, some slow brains create great results, some fast brains also create great results. You know, it's all the rhythm of your brain is who you are. So just go with your own rhythm. Fast or slow does not matter with me. It's the end results that we all see. So that's going to be... That's going to be the bone of the pelvis there from last week. So it fits in there into that socket. Made it a bit small for the socket, but you can see I'm enlarging it. So that's your task for this week, is going to be the connection of uh, them bones, them bones, them thigh bones, connects into the 
pelvis bones. Okay, so great to see you all and thoroughly enjoying all the texts and emails that are coming from all of you. It's really great to be able to work with you all and see how you're developing and everyone's doing so well. It's just absolutely fantastic. All my love. Take care. Have a great week. Over